Type it in the chat. I see. Hey, hey Kim. Hi, Atlanta. Kim. So good to see you, Kim. Who else? Who else? What we got? Texas. Texas. Los Angeles. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. We hope you weren't affected by the storms in Texas. All right. Yeah. Um, now I said nation, I should say country because I'm in South Africa today, y'all. So we got South Africa, we got Canada. Where else do we have? Put in the chat. Where oh, are you wow. tonight? We're so happy to see all of you in the room. As we lift the name of Jesus, we're gonna study. Hosea tonight. This, what is this? Week six, y'all? Um, I think we're on five, headed headed to six. Five, six. Yeah, uh -huh. week five, headed to six. <laughs> well, we've got some new things. First of all, if you are looking, we've got a new background. Uh -huh. Want to share some new and exciting things? We will reshare at the end. But our background, if you put your phone over the QR code. If you go right now and put your phone over the QR code, you're going to see something that's pretty amazing mm -hmm. that we have just launched. We recognize the powerful men and women that come to Bible study. You all are a part of our community. And our community is in desperate need of destiny helpers. Mm -hmm. that. If you like, I don't even know what that means. But when I hear <laughs> destiny helpers, I'm like, yep, I need one of them. Give me one oh. of the one in the chat. Yes. <laughs> All the way from yeah. LA. Yes. I need a destiny helper. So many of you are starting businesses, scaling businesses, doing a, a part-time hustle, mm -hmm. figuring yeah. out what to do with your nine to five so that you can make your 5 p.m. to nine more effective in what is purpose for you. You're trying to move up the ladder. You're trying to move out of corporate. We got so many ambitions. And one of the biggest things that we hear is, I wish I had another one of me. Yes. I wish I had good quality help that would do it with the level of excellence that I would do it. And I wish I could afford it. Those are the things that we hear all the time. And we have a solution for you. That is called Sister Diamond Support Services. It is a team of people that are affordable, that are going to give you the quality that you've been praying for, that are going to be your help so you can maximize and duplicate your efforts in a way that is going to not only build your business, bring more revenue into your life, but help you to be at peace. Because we know um, octopus are octopus, but a lot of times we act like them and still look around and say, I don't have enough. Nine is not enough. I need about 15 more, right? So please look at the QR code. I'm going to put in the chat for those of you that are like, I just need to know where to talk to somebody to see what y'all are up to because I know the quality work that you guys do. I just put that in the chat. Mm -hmm. where you can schedule a free call for yourself mm -hmm. to even just thought partner about what may be useful to you. Social media help, virtual assistant help, you name it. Okay. That so deserves a hallelujah. Thank you, sis. Thank you for sharing. Okay. Hallelujah. So please, whatever work you're doing, they can help. We so, have tried and tested them. They can help. Go ahead, sis. Yeah. I was just going to say, I see Amy on, cam on camera with her beautiful face. We would love to see you ladies. Come on in. So everybody okay. turn your cameras on. You, you all know how powerful energy is. And energy is transferable. So just seeing her beautiful face um is a blessing it it transfers um amazing energy so thank you Aaron mm -hmm. um you are in the room if you know the power of being in the room um and you know the room shifts when you are in the house amen put your camera on give us your energy we are all, oh there's miss Nicole you know that's full of that's sunshine come on in uh let's <laughs> beautiful 
this. Um, thank you. Cut your cameras on when you can. Um, we would love to see everyone. And if we could just start with an opening prayer, um, who feels led to open us with prayer? I can. Father God, yeah. thank, you. thank you for this amazing evening and opportunity to study your word and receive the testimonies of your mm -hmm. children. God, we are so grateful that you are a part of our lives and that you make sure that no matter where we've been, you are going to use it for your glory. You are going to use it for kingdom building. You are going to use it to elevate your people. So tonight, what gratitude we have to have one of our queens, Cecily, with us this evening. Oh my goodness. We are so grateful. We are so grateful for what you've done, what you continue to do, what you will do in her life through her for the good of your people. And we are honored to have her here tonight. So we thank you that you have already decreased all of us and increased your Holy Spirit in this space tonight that we would be able to glorify and magnify the name of mm -hmm. Jesus on this evening. We thank you yeah. in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Like, all right. Man. Bring us okay. in. All right. Hello. Hello. Hello, ladies. I am <laughs> so excited. First of all, uh, remember I said we're going to have a special guest and she is special. She is here tonight. She is my friend. I love her, love her, love her to pieces. <laughs> and um, I am so excited uh, what we have in store for you. So Get that phone out and say, hey, friend, it's not too late to join. Send them that link because <laughs> this one is going to be awesome because God is so awesome. So you're yes, in you. for a treat. Um, me and Cecily, Cecily, how long we've been knowing each other now? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hi, everyone. God bless y'all. Oh, too, too many years. To you're right. Decades, right? Decades. Years. Decades. Yes. And yes. so I invited Cecily here and I am so grateful that she said yes. And I invited her because her story lines directly up with Gomer's story. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was like, you know, Cecily, can you come in and can you just share with us uh, what God has done and what you have learned? And, and, um, and plus, um, Man, when I hear her talk and when I hear her share a testimony, I'm blessed again and again and again because she is sold out for God. I mean, totally, totally sold out. And so it's an honor to have you here, Cecily. Thank you for your bravery. Thank you for your vulnerability. And so we're just going to clap it up before we even hear oh, her testimony. Lord, clap it up. Lord, have your on. way, Lord. <laughs> have your way. Yeah, clap it up. And clap please it up. turn your cameras on because you know what it's like to be a guest and you're looking at all these boxes in Jesus' right, name. In Jesus' name. So fun. So please <laughs> let us be welcoming and turn yeah. some of those boxes. Come through. Yes. So we can yeah. see you. Awesome. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read the first couple of uh, chapters of the story. And then when I'm not chapters, we're in chapter eight, I'm going to read the first couple of verses of chapter eight. And then I'm going to have uh, Cecily uh, come in and share her story and we'll weave it in and out of the lesson. And then at the very end, you can have question and answer time too. So same format, but we have a very, very, very special guest. And so get those Bibles out still, because we still going to be on That's the case. I want to add, those of you following us on YouTube right now, share, 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 like, and share. This is going to be a powerful testimony. So like and share. Yeah. All right. So as we... Uh, go into chapter eight and we start with that. Um, basically what's happening is Hosea is talking to the people. He's talking to Israel. He's talking to the priests. He's talking to everybody. <laughs> so he's telling them once again, what thus said the Lord, just trying to get them to return back to the Lord. And so it says, sound the alarm. An eagle looms over the temple of the Lord. 
for they have broken their covenant with me and have rebelled against my law. Israel cries out to me, my God, we acknowledge you, but Israel has rejected what is morally good. So an enemy will pursue him. Verse four, the enthroned kings without my consent, they appointed princes without my approval. They made idols out of their silver and gold, but they will be destroyed. A uh, Samaria, he has rejected your calf idol. My anger burns against them. They will no longer, they will not survive much longer without being punished, even though they are Israelites. That idol was made by a workman. It is not God. The calf idol of Samaria will be broken to bits. Verse seven and eight. Uh, they sow the wind. And so they will reap the whirlwind. The stocks does not have any standing grain. It will not produce any flour, even if it were to yield grain. Foreigners would swallow it up. Israel will be swallowed up among the nations. They will be like a worthless piece of pottery. Woo, woo, woo. And so mm -hmm. he, here, I mean, he comes out with both guns just blazing. <laughs> he is like, you know, he is basically saying, um, Israel, your, your loyalty is artificial. It's superficial. Mm -hmm. And so you say, you know me, but you're not acting like, you know, me. Mm. you, you say we have a relationship, but if we had a relationship, you wouldn't be making your own idol. You Amen. wouldn't be, <laughs> you wouldn't be running after stuff that you shouldn't be running after. Right. And so I think all of us can relate to the time when we knew God, but it was informational only and not relational. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, you know, we didn't make the full commitment to walk it out. We knew him. We still called on him. We still talked to him, but we like Israel decided to do our own thing. Mm -hmm. And it was a superficial relationship. We just stayed on top. <laughs> you know, like you are like you didn't even dip your whole self into the relationship. And so I want to welcome Cecily to share her testimony and her story and how, like this very verse, you still knew God, but decided to do what you wanted to do at the time that you wanted to do it. So welcome, Cecily, again. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I just have to share with you that, um, first of all, Welcome. God bless you all. And I thank God for being invited <laughs> to this powerful Bible study. Um, I've known Dr. Casey <laughs> since we were very young. And as a matter of fact, her and her family were very instrumental in um, really uh, leading me to the Lord by example. Mm -hmm. No, and uh, that was a foundational part of my life, uh, really knowing God. But I kind of treated God like a convenience. You no, know, I mm -hmm. would go in and and get what I felt like I needed to get. You know, and I would leave out. So um, this is really my first time really sharing my testimony. I just have to say I'm I'm 58 years old, well, almost 58. I'll be 58 in a month. And I have seven children. And part of my testimony is sharing with my children my testimony. Because I feel like as a, a parent, you have to share with your children certain parts of your life because the world is cruel. And um, people that knew you when you were in your mess will oftentimes bring that up to destroy you. So I have to say I, at the age of 23, I decided to become a hooker. And that was a decision that I made. I had two children. And uh, what I thought was oh, desperation to some money, oh, I went out I there. think somebody now, needs I, to mute. <laughs> I had already been in the United States. So I'd already served this nation. I had already went to college and was a college division one athlete. Um, so there was really no reason why I would make a decision to 
turn against what I knew. Mm -hmm. But there was a reason for that because really in my heart, I didn't receive God for who he really was in my life. So that's just a little uh, bit about me. I didn't have a traffic ticket. I had never been in trouble with the law. Mm -hmm. And here I am at 20 years old and I just have to be straight out wearing booty shorts and showing my tail to mm -hmm. get some money. And I was dang gone good at it. Mm -hmm. you no, know, so I do understand that because whatever I did, I put it all in. And I just remember um Dr. Casey, you know, the song that she would just always uh play was Can You Reach My Friend? That is <laughs> And um, just being out there, um, really very vulnerable, but actually thinking that you're empowered. Mm -hmm. And um, there's an empowerment with that, but yet there's a very large amount of vulnerability. So like, you know, the word of God says, you begin to um, sell items, you know, uh -oh, says, up. Your sound. Say that one more time. Your sound is going in and out. Okay. You you do begin to offer up additional items. Go in for one purpose. And the next thing you know, you're building your idols at the cross. Mm -hmm. And it's very sobering, but your mind is so twisted mm -hmm. to the things of the world, to the harlotry of the world that you don't understand that in all actuality, you're a victim. That's what mm. I would like to add to that. And I came from a family that had no idea about the type of life that I was living. My mom was a school teacher. You know, so it just was no reason that I didn't come from the hood, none of that. But the enemy drew me because guess what? I have to say that was what was in me because mm -hmm. we're carried away by our own lusts and our own desires. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that a little bit more, Cecily? You talk about the enemy drawing you in. Um, how did how did that happen? What what was it that the enemy was saying to you that would make you go into that life? Well, you know, just like you were saying, it's it's really interesting that you were speaking about the ministry that you have, so we don't have to a lack. Oftentimes, lack. He draws you in by what you consider your need. It's mm -hmm. nothing that he's, he's not going to disrupt. Sometimes he does, but the, the voices are very subtle. It's based on what your desire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like I say, you're not desperate. God is disciplining you. But when you place yourself in a position where you feel desperate, it could be a lack of money. It could be mm -hmm. lack of knowledge. It could, you know, there's just many things. But for me at that time, I felt that I was vulnerable in the area of finances. But when I look back on it, I was not. I had mm -hmm. everything that I needed. So lack will draw um, insecurities. So it wasn't, a, so my thing was, I'm going to, and then here comes the enemy. Oh, you know, you can, make money doing this and it's quick. But now I knew better. Mm. I knew better. But my soul didn't know better. See? Mm. And it's a soul issue. It is a, mm. it's a soul. It, I know I have been out there. In one day, my whole life was changed. But in one day, God brought my life back. And that's mm. how fast it happened. But this, this thing festers in you, mm -hmm. investors in it talks to you subtly mm -hmm. and it cries out a need, but the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So, whatever that desire is, is what the enemy off of. And, like I was sharing with Dr. Casey, in all actuality, what's really the harlot is the world, mm -hmm. and the harlot sucks you into what your desire is. That's mm. how I um, kind of interpret it now. Now, mind you, you know, I was in my 20s. That was 30-something years ago. And I'm just now 
feeling um, ready to share this story because my children are old enough to handle. Because some things you don't just, for me personally, I'm not going to go out there because I have children that I have to um, consider. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that the man that was my pimp, I ended up marrying. Wow. My butt mm -hmm. was down. So that's a whole nother story. But yeah. man, that was my pimp. I ended up marrying. We were married for 25 years. Wow. Doesn't always wow. that, but that's how, um, you know, God uh, kind of allowed redemption. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. That's it's so powerful. And yeah. you know, we talk about when we talk about Gomer and Hosea, we, you know, we're talking about how God continually chased after, chased after her and paid a price for her to bring her home. How was that represented in your life? I heard you say just one day uh, turned you around. Like how, how long were you in that life and how did you feel God continually chasing you during that time? I was in that life long enough to, let me just put it like this, build a record up so long in four counties in Southern California, but it was only for two and a half years. Mm. At first, when I first entered into that life, it's a totally different culture. So you're actually um, kind of learning the culture. It, it's not what people actually think when I was involved in it. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very, at that time, um, it was order. It, it wasn't, it was just work. So mm -hmm. you literally went to work. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you were dealing with other women that were out there. Uh, of course, the, the, the men that were, uh, well, you know, tricks. Men that were tricks. You're dealing with the police. You're dealing with your camp. You're dealing with so many uh, variables. But in all actuality, when you go out there, you put on your clothes to go to work. When you come home, take those clothes off. You're no longer really that person. So mm -hmm. it's it's almost like a magicianry kind of uh, you're playing a part, you know. So I, I see a lot of the girls now, it's a little different. You know, we literally disguised ourselves. We put wigs on. It was not uh, a lifestyle that we portrayed outside of uh, the work that we did. And you can't become very close with a lot of the women there. And then there are a lot of enemies out there. You come close with a, a certain sect of women because they can save your life. You know, so when you're out there, I'm sorry, that's, I'm at, I'm at work. Um, mm -hmm. You become engulfed in that way of life. Mm -hmm. At first, it seems very awkward because you're not used to that. Some people come from the streets already. So for me, that was not my story. And um, becoming acclimated to that env environment and just the, the way of life, the wording, how you speak to each other. The words that they use so loosely now on the streets is, uh, was not used mm -hmm. in, a, in a normal environment. So you have to become part of that lifestyle. Mm. And if you don't, not survive. At first, mm. I can't say that God was um, really uh, loud in my, in my conscience. Mm. You know, but what he utilized were friends. Because first of all, you get isolated. You become very isolated. So your friends, your family, where are you? But we're, we're mm -hmm. you know, they know something's wrong. Mm -hmm. So what, what would happen with me, and I think what happens is people begin to um, chase you. Mm -hmm. and I, you know, then you start breaking off those relationships. Mm -hmm. So when the relationships begin to get broken off, now the enemy believes that your covering no longer exists. Mm -hmm. So now that you're out there naked. Mm -hmm. But in all actuality, you are not out there naked because mm -hmm. God, you get put in position and you know it's God. People say, you don't belong out here. 
what are you doing out here? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a stamp on your life and you cannot run from it. Mm. You get put in positions like, you know, you go out there to do one thing, next thing you know, now you're robbed. Mm. You know, now a lot of people are using drugs. Now you're an alcoholic. Now, you know, it just does not end with the original intent that you started. Mm. So, you started with Jack and wanting to make money, and then you go out there and you get pulled in by those spirits into other criminal activities, drugs, all those things. It's just, it sounds like it's just a black hole. Right. But you know, I have to also address that everything is not a spirit, some of it is the flesh. Mm -hmm. so, so that's the thing that people don't understand. We want to blame everything on a spirit, but it's the flesh. The flesh will destroy you just like a spirit. Mm -hmm. So we have to go in and uh, recognize what are the works of the flesh. Mm -hmm. you know, and so a lot, a lot of times we're praying about things of the spirit, yes, but the spirit also will attach itself to the works of your flesh. So we have to be aware of the actions that we do. And, 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 you know, when we're dealing with younger people, we have to make them aware of their ability to control their flesh. That is the most important thing, because if my flesh were under control, then spirits wouldn't have been able to attach themselves to those areas of my life. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Oh, you know what? Oh, go on, Nicole. I, you know, I'm hearing what you're saying, and I, I think about, you know, often people from the outside looking in, being able to say, well, you could have stopped at any time. Why didn't you just stop? Can you tell us psychologically what? was happening that made you continue to move further down the rabbit trail? Come on. It ain't about, for me, and I'm just, I have a college degree, mm -hmm. but I have to tell y'all this. It's mm. the money. Mm. It is the love uh -huh. of money. Mm -hmm. That is the root Money is dormant. Money has no spirit. Love has a spirit. When you attach that love to something that has no spirit, that is the root to all. It's not the sex. You're out there and you're not providing sexual acts to most of these customers. It is magic, magic, which is not God. It's deception. It's deceit. Their mind is already predestined to fall into sin. Mm -hmm. So when their minds are already destined to do that, you understand that. So what you actually do is you play into their issues. Mm -hmm. And you're not providing them necessarily with the you're not providing them all the time with the service you are a master of this and mm. they are a master of their flesh so you end up putting that together and you're getting what you want which is their money that's the only thing that you want from that individual money you don't care if you have the skill for it you don't care you are they're a trick and you are going to trick them into giving you what you want. If I'm out there and I'm, you know, let's, that was in uh, 1990 when I started. I don't remember what minimum wage was, but let's just say I'm making, let's just say $400 a week. If I can make $400 a night. Why would I make $400 a week? If I mm. can go out on a Friday night and this is just the truth and make $1,300 in four hours, why in the world would I work? as a waitress and make four, $400 in a, in a week. Hmm. One thing that I can truly say is what is empowering to women, and I'm speaking to women, there may be men here. We have to understand lack is not of God. 
And so mm -hmm. many people will do things to get money and then you get trapped. Mm -hmm. you get trapped. And that is what was my, my stronghold. I wanted mm -hmm. to be able to just get in, you know, get in, my whole goal, I'm just going to get in, I'm going to make this money and then I'm going to get out. But no, that's not how it works. Because that money, then you make that money, you make that money again. Why would you get out? God mm. has to grab your heart. God has to snatch your heart. There is no mm. way in, it is totally impossible that any human being can pull themselves out of that type of sin. It's only God. Mm -hmm. Only God. Mm -hmm. The bottom line for that is death and destruction. There's no other way. I can't say, oh, I did. I didn't do a thing. Mm -hmm. I had nothing. To, now, I had everything to do with going in. But when God snatched my heart and cleansed me, and it's a whole nother story. I was full of demons, full of them, full mm. of them. And you get to the point, you don't care what you do, because now it's not even about the money. You know how to get that. But now that grit that wants to destroy you and anyone around you, including your children. I had two children at that time. Of course, you think you're going to do something for them. But in all that, how they get into the world where it says you even sacrifice your own children. Yes, you do. You don't mm. sacrifice them, because that's the thing. Mm -hmm. You don't have a choice. The enemy, we have no choice. Either you're going to go God's way or you're going to go the way of the flesh, which is destruction, or the way of the enemy. Those are the Ooh. only ways. And there mm -hmm. ain't no choice. And you are like a, when a two dogs grab a towel and they get to fighting over that towel. I'm telling you what, it's like the death grip. You are not going to get out unless there's people praying for you. And I'm talking mm -hmm. about you praying for me. And he'll send a police officer say, what you doing out here? He'll mm -hmm. send a trick and say, no, you ain't supposed to be out here. Mm -hmm. He'll send your mama's prayers that just pass you and be like, what? Mm -hmm. sing your song. Can you reach my friend up in there? No. Mm -hmm. Only, only God will deliver you. Mm -hmm. And he'll wipe you. I'm telling you, I can't tell y'all enough about this. It gets me, it, it blows my mind. Mm -hmm. If God ain't blowing your mind, you better check it. Because mm. there's some things you cannot do on your own. Mm. I'm telling you, I walked into this ministry. It was in a hotel. And I'm getting ahead of myself, but there's so much I'm really not. I walked into this. I had started drinking very heavy. I never used drugs through God's grace. But I'll tell you what, Jack mm. Black was my liquor. I will drink that Jack Black, turn it up like it's water because I knew at one point I could not, this was not where I was supposed to, but I could not get out. So mm -hmm. I said, let me just turn it up. Turn mm -hmm. it up. And I turn mm -hmm. up that Jack Black and anything that the enemy or my flesh told me to do gave me strength. But one mm -hmm. time I said, now Lord, this is just getting to be much. And I had been talking to the Lord, talking to the Lord on the track, booty short. Shirt just so little, you can't even, just looking a mess, but thought I was cute. And God said, go into this um, hotel. So I went into this hotel. Me and my, it was my husband at the time, my pimp was uh, going up to this hotel to stay, get a room. And I heard the gospel music. Hmm. Uh -uh. Go, let me, let me just go up in here and see what's going on. I told him, because I was tired. I told him, look, I'm going down here. I got to, the spirit of the Lord is calling me. So I went into the to the they had a like a rec room and they were having a revival and the spirit of the Lord now I was drunk with booty shorts and a little bitty shirt when mm -hmm. I went in there they didn't try to put a towel over me they didn't try to cover me up they didn't look at me funny they didn't try to say oh you're drinking but then women of God looked at me and I went in I peeked in my old man said come on come on so I said, oh, Lord, here we go. So I, I go into the elevator and we go up to our room. So when we get up to the elevator and the, the elevator is supposed to stop, it stopped, but it didn't open the door. It no, the door would not open. He pressing hmm. the buttons. What's going on? He just acting a fool. Just, I said, uh. 
So then I pressed the button to go down to the floor one where we were. Took me down, opened the door. I said, oh, I'm going up back in there. I don't care what this is. Mm. Those women of God, when I entered into that revival, the power, whew, mm. the power of God took control. And I got Jesus. to say, lifting up my hand, I didn't care what I had on. I got, don't matter. I'm telling you, it's not in the dress. It's not in the music that these kids are listening to. It's not in any of that that we have to focus on. We've got to focus on the power of God that destroys every yoke. Yes. And I got up in there, and the only thing that I had to do with that is that God positioned my body where he wanted me to be. And I got mm. up in there, and all I know is I raised my hands, and I got to lifting up the voice of the Lord, and all I know is them women laid hands on them. Boom! Jesus. The power, and them women started tarrying with me, just praying over me, praying right. over me. And mm. if you don't believe in spirits, oh, they're real. And all I remember is they begin to tarry over me, and I was like, oh, and I'm telling you, I'm telling y'all, you don't have to believe, but I, it don't matter. Because somebody in here needs to hear this. When God got done me, y'all, I was on the floor barking like a dog. All mm. I remember is those women got to calling out spirits. Mm -hmm. And I was crawling, crawling, mm -hmm. trying to get. And I remember seeing my um ex, well, he's my ex, whatever, the pimp's feet. And he was trying to come in. And I was trying, because familiar spirit. I mm -hmm. remember just trying to crawl to him. Now, that's not me. That's the demon. I'm trying to crawl. crawl. And all I know is the Spirit of the Lord knocked me out under his power. Them women got to praying for me, praying for me. And I, they just were praying, laying hands. I, and my, my husband told me that I was in there. He couldn't do nothing. He said they prayed for you for about an hour. Hmm. And when I got up, I the power got hit. All I was doing was, oh, Oh, whoa, whoa, <laughs> Lord. And I'm telling you, the power God hit me so hard, mm. delivered me. Mm. In the hour, a destined <laughs> appointment. Mm. And I went back up to that room. And now I didn't know these women. I went, they, I just remember, they said three days. That's what it talks about in chapter six of Hosea. Mm -hmm. In three days. He'll deliver you in three days. And I he told me three days. Don't go back out there for three days. Mm. So I said, Lord, I'm I'm, mm. I'm 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 getting filled with the Holy Spirit now because all I'm doing is uh, <laughs> uh, and now my husband is perturbed. I mean, he just cussing me out. Just mm -hmm. I said, take me to my mama. Take me to my mama. I gotta get to my mama. I said, I ain't <laughs> taking you to your mama. I said, Oh Lord, okay, three days. First day, I, I said, okay, Lord, first day. Second day, I said, okay. Third day, I didn't make it. Third day, I didn't make it. I went back out there. Mm -hmm. Went back out there. Third day. So I'm back out there, but it ain't, ain't nothing right now. Ain't not, the power of God doesn't hit. Ain't nothing right. Nothing is right. I'm still doing what I normally do, but it doesn't feel right. But then I was walking down with my little high heel. A little skirt. My skirt was a little longer than normal now because I'm like, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit met me when mm -hmm. I was crossing the bridge in the city of Pomona, California, right there on Kadoda Street. And he said, if your daughter's salvation was based on how you're living right now, would your children go to heaven or hell? I said, oh, now you know now, now Lord, you done hit me real low. Now, mm. now, 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 this ain't about them. We don't have conversations. Because see, you can be filled with God. We don't have conversations about my children. Mm -hmm. this, this, this ain't about them, Lord. He said, but I asked you a question. And I began to weep. I said, they're on their way to hell. They're on their way to hell. I mm. said, uh, still didn't get, uh, get me. About two weeks later. Now, now I'm a thief, y'all. Now I'm a thief. I, I'm a thief now. So I'm out there with this trick 
and I beat this trick for, it was thousands of dollars, but I was with another hooker. And this hooker was not like a family uh, friend because, you know, you have bonds out there. So when I'm fighting this trick, literally I'm fighting this trick and she, I give her the money because I don't want to lose the money. When I give her the money, God allows me to see her the money, call it pull the money off. She tucks part of the money. So I'm ready now after I'm done with you. I want to fight her. I want to beat her down because she done stole my money. Holy Spirit said, how are you going to uh, try to beat her now? Stole his money. Mm -hmm. He stole his money from you. And he said, take what you got and you will never be on the streets another day of your life. Now go on. And that mm -hmm. was in less than a month from when I had the encounter with the women at the hotel. And all the Holy Spirit said to me was, stay off three days. This time, hmm. I didn't depend on my man. I got that money. I didn't even fight for it. I said, I know what you did, but I'm not, I'm not going to be on the streets. I don't care what you did. I got that money that I had. My mom had given me a key. She said, no matter what you do, no matter what you do, on to this key. She said, I'm not going to chase you anymore. You're ready come home. I had that key. I took, I live in Riverside County. I was in LA County. I took the money I had. I left. I called the taxi. I told that taxi, take me to my mama's house. Hmm. And when my hmm. mama got home, it must have been like maybe three or four hours later, she said, what you doing? And I'm home and I'm not leaving. I'm done. Hmm. That was not me. That was the power of God. Mm. Only three days. Now, there were tricks that still would try to contact me and all that, but I said, mm. and I never went back out there. That was in 1992. And I was pregnant. My son, his name is Makai, prophet of God. And mm. I never back out on the street. That's just a short story of kind of beginning but there's so much in the middle. But to say we have no mm. control or power to make decisions unless God puts it in our heart to turn our mind all mm. God. Amen. Amen. Oh my God, that's so powerful. Um, two things stood out to me, Cecily. Um, one was that the women did not have judgment for you. They just prayed for you. Right. They just prayed for you. They didn't, they didn't look at how you were dressed. They didn't, they didn't, they just they didn't pass judgment on you. They received you. And oftentimes the church can be guilty of you know, judging people yeah. and not welcoming and, and, um, you know, showing God's love to people and it can be clicky. Right. Yeah. So that, that is powerful. And then the other thing that you said that's powerful is your mom had that unconditional love to say, mm -hmm. I know you were there in those streets. I'm not pleased. I'm not happy. I know I taught you better. I know, you know, better, but I'm going to provide a safety for you by giving you this key mm -hmm. because I'm praying. Mm -hmm. And when God get a hold of you, I need you to have a place to go. That's mm -hmm. so because as a mother, you know, and, and, and put a, put a one in the chat for those mothers in here that sometimes our kids don't do what we want them to do. You know, they don't live the lifestyles that we raise them to live and they're not showing up in the world the way that we have trained them. Right. But what I'm hearing is you got to keep praying for them. You got to keep praying for them. And not only that, you got to keep believing that God answers prayers, that God hears your prayers and you got to provide that space for them that even though I don't agree with what you're doing, I'm going to keep holding space for your deliverance. That's and it's yeah. destiny. See, a lot of times people don't understand though that and I always tell my kids 
regardless of what happens, only one thing is going to take you out. God already knows when your life on this earth will expire on this earth. So if we as parents really understand, train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they're old, they will not depart from you. Train that child up in the way that they should go. Now, it does get very difficult at times, but we have to believe that word so much that regardless of what it looks like, we have to understand that that is a part of the destiny. Because mm. the life that I encountered for those two and a half years has made me part of the woman that I am today. See, because if I did not have that experience, if I did not have that wounded sense of how the enemy desires to grip me, mm -hmm. like a firm Christian, you know, if I did not, I had to go through that struggle. I was incubated for a, such a time as that so that mm -hmm. God could get me, and I surely could. Because mm. if I did everything right, I would think it was me. But when mm. you get so deep down in the gutter mm -hmm. to where you can't even pull yourself out, you can't mm. take no blame. See, the problem is so many people of God have too much pride. Mm. It's too much pride. Mm. And the Holy Spirit says, oh, you got idols. I ain't got no idols. I sit up there, I go to, you got an idol. Because yeah. why would he bring it to the world if it's not in us? Mm -hmm. Anything that is in this world, we have the potential to have it in us. Mm -hmm. So when we get down to the dirt, mm -hmm. to the dirt of life, only God can bring forth life with some water mm -hmm. of life. And I understand that what a lot of people go through is destiny. Like if your child is in prison, maybe he or she is in prison, but maybe they would have been dead. Mm -hmm. So where does God have to, where, where do you have to be to meet God? Mm -hmm. We got to let it go. Yeah. Got to let it go. And just literally, and that's me too. And allow God's word to mm -hmm. penetrate our loved ones. You know, even the people that we don't particularly care for. How in the world could a pimp actually bring me to God? I mean, come on now. Because he, he taught me that without God, I would not have made it. Mm -hmm. You no, know, so I just, I just, I'm just kind of really rather raw, mm -hmm. but I just want people to understand that, or I don't even care if they understand. I just got to share my testimony. That's Amen. why I'm so grateful that you all um, allow me space because when you look at me, you never know what I went through. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, you never know. I've heard people talk about, mm -hmm. oh my God, she's a hooker. Oh, look at her little hooker self. She's just a. Ooh, put a two in the chat if you don't look like what you've been through. <laughs> Praise him. Hey, man. Nice. Look hey, better. Man. They look better now uh, <laughs> before Jesus. <laughs> you already know. <laughs> you look better you now. Are, you Let me already ask you this know. Question. You know, so, God is so good. And when we understand that every and i'm speaking to the women you are jew mm -hmm. you come from a royal priesthood a holy nation yes, and God. when we really understand that regardless of what our circumstances or our situations look like that is true temporary it's just a temporary state and when god begins to bless uh women whether it's through um psalm or financially or whatever the gift of encouragement that is a gift that we must extend to other women mm -hmm. and men 
it's it, you know so for me it's it's my time to share that it don't matter what you did mm. god doesn't look at that because we've mm. all done something but god will take exactly who made who he made you be. look at moses god we don't call ourselves we don't have anything to do with that god calls us yes like the song mm. knows my name yes he knows your name Cicely, he knows your name Cicely, mm. you were it's it's so powerful hearing everything that you're saying um because in studying the book of hosea we can see how God was positioning us to see his pursuit of Gomer. Yes. That he's pursuing her. And, and one of the things we talked about in the Bible study in the early, like the first week or two was how we indirectly had judgment for Gomer because we were sorry for Hosea. We were like, oh, poor Jose. Right. Yeah. You done been dealt a raw deal. Oh, right. my goodness. And we had to stop and say, wait a minute now. That's a whole lot of judgment that we have for Gomer as if she is his his penance, his penalty in yes. some way, right? Without seeing ourselves in Gomer. Mm -hmm. how God has pursued us relentlessly sometimes pursued us yes to to get connected to us where we are to bring us back to him can you talk about any instances where you were out there but you could tell he was trying to get to you you may not have answered right then but you mm. you you knew it was him you knew he was pursuing you i never answered I never answer. Mm -hmm. Don't get it. Mm -hmm. Oh God. I never answer. Mm -hmm. My mind was blocked. Mm -hmm. How do you answer when you're deaf? Mm -hmm. How can you lead when you're blind? There's no answer. Mm -hmm. Only God's spirit in me answered himself. Mm. It's only God's spirit in you that answers himself. Oh, that's mm. it's powerful. That's so powerful. He's that's life, not us. Unless the prayers that we answer, that he answers, comes from himself, they won't connect. Mm. Mm. I'm going to tell you this one story, and I'm going to bring it even to today. Mm. At that time, in California, there was a killer out there. I can't, I, I can't, I, I, the Green River Killer. And one of my friend's sister was murdered by this green river. Mm. And I was out and I knew that I had just got the Holy Spirit said, don't deal with this. I the Holy Spirit said, what, Cecily? Don't deal with this trick. Mm -hmm. Don't mm -hmm. deal with this trick. But I did it. And he was a Caucasian man. He's a white man. And usually white tricks tend to be okay. So I was in Riverside. Thank God I knew this area. So I got in the car. So when you get in the car, you always check to make sure that you have a way of escape. So I did everything that I thought I was supposed to. I rolled down the window. It was that checked out. I locked the door and then I unlocked the door and I looked around to make sure no weapons. Everything seemed clear. The, the man was seen cool. So I told him where I wanted him to go, but he began to get a little 
feared. I said, oh, oh, man, oh, man. So he told me he was going to take me to the apartment because it was vice. But you can't to the police department, you to said? To the police department. He said, I'm taking you to the police department. I'm vice. I said, okay. I knew he was not because vice never does that. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay. Now, I'm checking the compartments, but trying to do it slow, you know, so that I can go on and escape. I, I could not escape. There was mm -hmm. no way of escape. So mm -hmm. I said, okay. Okay, Lord. Now, see, now I call on, now I call on the Lord, right? Okay, Lord. Oh, Lord, I'm saying, oh, Jesus, I'm just a crying out to the Lord, right? My convenience store God. Okay. So he starts taking me up this. So I said, well, what? You know, now I got to be calm. Where are you? Oh, I'm taking you up to the apartment. So now he goes on a tangent. Now, I want to just interject this as well. Women are powerful. In every instance in my situation where I had a man that tried to kill me, and I do try to kill him. Every time he began to speak about his anger towards his mother, his aunt, his sister, some type of abusive situation when he was young with the woman in his life. Just hold that. Just hold that mm. thought. Every situation where a man tried to kill me. And where do they look? They look where women are vulnerable in those red light trap type of districts, right? Okay, so he began to tell me, he went from he's taking me to the police department to now he's angry at his mom and his aunt. And I'm saying, okay, I understand. I understand. So now he's just taking me a back way, up a back street. I said, I said this is a river killer. This man's going to kill me. But then something raised up and said, no, he's not. So he's taking me up down the back lot. I'm saying, okay. So the Holy Spirit mm. said, Look, you only have one time to escape. When I tell you what to do, you do exactly what I tell you to do. And I'm going to make sure that you get out of this situation. And I said to myself, mm. okay, folks, talk, okay. So the Holy Spirit said, he take, I said, where are you taking? I'm taking you to the police department. Now he's getting angry. I said, okay, okay. So now I roll down the window. Now, mind you, this window would not roll down. This window would not roll down. I roll down the window. And I'm just rolling it down very gently so he can't, you know, hear. So he catches me rolling down the window. And he's, what are you doing? I said, nothing. So by this time, the Holy Spirit said, stay. So I roll down the window. He's driving. I start punching him. With my right, I'm just punching it. I'm punching it, punching it, punching it. Uh oh, Cecily, he's speeding up. He's speeding he up. Said, that's Can good. Come close. Yeah. Okay. okay, he's speeding up, and there's a viaduct in the middle of um of the road. So I'm punching him, and I'm rolling down the window, and literally, y'all, I'm theatrical. I get out, and now I, I can't. We can't hear you. Wait, we can't. Hear I got my legs out the window. I'm, I'm, I'm punching him and he's trying to grab me, but I got my legs out the window and he's now going probably about 65 miles an hour. Mm. I jump out of, with my purse too now. I had to have my purse. I jump out. You only carry a little purse because you know, they'll choke, they'll kill you with your purse. They'll choke you. Mm. So I jump, I got my purse and I jump out of the, the window with my high, I had about three inches of high heels on and I landed on my feet. That's only God. And I took off running. I said, Lord, what am I going to do? I don't know what to do. So he was going so fast that he realized I'm out the window. So he starts backing up. So I said, oh Lord, what am I going to do? So I get, I jump over to the other side and I start running the opposite direction. No cars. It's pitch black. It's about 12 to 1 o'clock. And what ends up happening is all of a sudden a car appears coming down the street. Hold on one moment. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's all I'm saying. Jesus. And Jesus. I, I'm telling you, he backed up and then he saw the car. There was no cars. Then this car appears and I'm, you know, Waving them down, waving them down. And I'm like, oh, 
Oh God, God, my boyfriend hurt me. And it was hear you say, Lee. I I was telling him that my boyfriend was trying to hurt me. I got in a fight with my boyfriend, mm -hmm. and they stopped. They said, "Look, it was two young men and a woman. They were like college age, about my age, because I was only twenty three at that time." Mm. And they said, "Where do you want to go?" I said, "Take me to downtown Riverside." And I'm telling you, that is one time, mm. one of many that I know that God spared my life. That man was going to kill me. And he told me. He said he's mm. going to Jesus, Jesus. That didn't stop me, though. I stayed off the streets for two days and went on back. That didn't stop me. Because, see, the enemy wanted to kill me. Mm. So is that, that is one time that the Holy Spirit connected to me. He said, that's what you're not, that ain't your time yet. Mm. Mm. And that is one time that I one time that I can do. Wow. My, my God, my God. You know, and it is it something how, like you said, um, in those times, <laughs> even when we not we're not um intentional about being in God's presence and talking to God, but in those times of need, even even an atheist will say, Oh God, oh God. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. 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 cry out. Mm. Yes. We know he's wow. Because you know what? Who are we really to even say that atheists? Because see, we don't we, we put labels and I, I and you know because we put labels just because you claim that you're an atheist doesn't mean that's how you're gonna go out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We we can label people and they label themselves. Mm -hmm. I'm an atheist, I'm a, a whatever agnostic. Mm -hmm. Okay, again, I'm not going to judge what you call your title because, see, that also is a form of dress. So mm -hmm. if those women judged me with my booty mm -hmm. shorts and my little high-waisted shirt, I wouldn't have maybe have been um, serving the Lord today. So mm -hmm. if you're telling me you're an atheist or agnostic, guess what? That's a garment that I decide I'm not going to judge. I'm not judging you. I'm not judging your title or who you are because... God don't care what you call yourself if he called you his child. Mm. Amen. You know, God changes your name. It don't matter what your name is. God said, I'm <laughs> changing that. It don't matter what your religion is. I'm bigger than all that. When I pull you out, the only thing you're going to say is Jesus is holy. So, Jesus. you know, those are titles that we, again, that those are garments. Yes. That we yeah. have to, you know, Kind of oftentimes just ignore, you know, mm -hmm. know that it's there, but we're just going to ignore it because half the time those folks just want to fight anyway. I ain't got time to be fighting with you. I know who my God is. I'm gonna show you his love. Amen. Amen. Everyone, please, if you have any questions, yeah. Lee, or you just wanna, you just yeah. wanna uh, talk to her, feel free to unmute yourself or type in the chat so we can see your messages. What has been your aha or takeaway from Cecily's testimony? Anybody want to share? Ahas, takeaways, um, questions? You know what? Can I jump on in there, y'all? Because this love you, this, love you, Cess. You know yeah. what is a trip? Sometimes for me, it's Cecily. I'm so proud of you, and we don't even know seeds that we're planting, even when we're not walking strong. And I. Think about my mother and how um, I think about Cecily because I've known Cecily since she was like 12 or 13 and how she's been a blessing in our family, you know, with my family, my husband, our kids. And I just thought about, you know what? We think about the seeds. My mother taught us you ain't no better, but you're going to do better. You ain't going to judge nobody. And every time this young lady showed up at our home we were not allowed to judge her yeah, my mm. mother just loved her mm -hmm. and we prayed over her mm -hmm. and now mm -hmm. i see the glory and i said i'm thinking i'm looking at says and i'm like everything she's done i'm telling mm -hmm. you her kid her, her daughter gave my sons a first high powered job they worked as security mm -hmm. at the mtv awards at 17 years old 
and I remember her daughter said, come in a suit. They put my kids in security on the red car carpet mm. and kept calling mm. them back. So we don't even know what mm. we're doing. And if we just be obedient and like Cecily mm. said, don't judge people and love them. And I thank my mother mm. for making us never, we couldn't mm -hmm. turn our backs. And this mm. is funny. And I'm going to end with this. I remember me mm -hmm. and Casey stood in line four hours, Cecily. <laughs> To come visit her in jail and we <laughs> talked to hundreds of, and Casey said I'm out of here it was so funny she, we mm -hmm. met women who rode buses with little kids and Casey mm -hmm. was like we both looked and Cecily said she was happy we didn't make it in there but we <laughs> stood up, and we were Casey was going this way people to people stand in line this long right. and we were there in line for four hours waiting to go see her and we end up leaving but we didn't even know when i think about it the ministry of those women mm -hmm. and then i went into this field and i remember just standing in that line and what it took so i had more empathy for those who visit and people incarcerated with children i was a lot more empathetic by that experience experience so cecily i am so overwhelmed and proud of you and you know we love you so thank you mm -hmm. keep speaking your word mm -hmm. thank you Inoko. thank I you Inoko. i just love <laughs> and, and i just want to say this um Inoko is such a beautiful straight out big sister. and i remember mm -hmm. that she offered she said says i don't want children to go through this. She mm -hmm. said, my oldest daughter, she said, let me just take her for you. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't have to go through mm -hmm. this foolishness. And that's mm -hmm. basically what she said. She doesn't need to go through this foolishness. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, she's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. But we will sacrifice our children. Mm -hmm. But God mm -hmm. has a plan. Mm -hmm. I, I love what's happening in the chat, you guys. It's so it's so meaningful. Um, I I see where um people are celebrating you, Cecily, mm -hmm. and your courage. And I see where Marianne says, Thank you, Cecily. Uh -huh. At the uh -huh. Bible study, we were asked what we wanted to get out of Bible study. Mm -hmm. And I said, I wanted to know that God will fight for me. And your story is just that, thank I think. just mm -hmm. that. I'm mm -hmm. super thankful and grateful. I see mm -hmm. another one where it says, I'm um, trying to go up because they're mm -hmm. starting to roll a little bit. Um, God will fight for you, but whatever you're going through, you have to trim it over to him. Give it over to mm -hmm. him. Don't try and take it back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I see another one that says here, um, thank you, Cecily. What a powerful testimony you carry. Mm -hmm. Jesus, do not judge. Mm -hmm. Glory. Hallelujah. Those are just so powerful. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody else that wants to, to yeah. say? I, yeah, I to yeah. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Hi, everyone. Mr. Uh, Lee, Lee. I, I just want to say thank you for coming on and sharing your story because you're absolutely right. The way God works is so magical because you said you mm -hmm. you just now been able to share your story. Right. And so yeah. we're all on this call for a reason. I know I know all about mm -hmm. the law. I've been codependent. My mother was in that life. Yes. So that's how I know about it. My grandmother was in that life. So mm -hmm. I know I know everything you're talking about. Yeah. And I I really appreciate mm -hmm. how you said you got to love people. You got to mm -hmm. love. Don't judge the person. Because one, that's what my mother would always say. She could never get out of her addiction because she didn't have love. When I would ask <laughs> her, mom, what is it that you need? You know, like, why aren't we enough? And she would be like, baby, just love me. Just love me. You know, mm -hmm. but I, I think that um, to have these experiences and to hear mm -hmm. real people like you talk mm -hmm. about life, that's what matters to somebody like me. Mm -hmm. Because the women in the church, they always hurt me. They always mm -hmm. judged me and they were turning me away. Mm -hmm. and, and they didn't know what I was trying to fight against. You see what I'm saying? 
I was yeah. trying to save my family, save myself. But they would mm -hmm. look at this little dress, look at this little this, this, this. Because mm -hmm. I'm from the street too, but I went to Spelman. I go, I went to UCLA. Yes. I'm well educated. Yes. I've, I've excelled in my life. I've worked for nothing but Fortune 500 companies. I'm in yes. the entertainment and I'm still growing. I'm still working mm -hmm. at it. But what you said about your children, we do have to fight against those spirits. We mm -hmm. do. We have to pay that debt. Yes. And it will be paid, but I'm, that's where I'm at with it. So I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the strength and the courage that you gave me today because there's not many people mm -hmm. who will come out and tell these stories that I can identify with. Mm -hmm. You see? Well, it's Great. a blessing. I'm so glad that, you know, the power of the Holy Spirit touched you because he is just so amazing, you know, and just to hear your testimony, how you have come out. I've seen so many young men and women that were caught up in the addictions of, you know, their parents. And yep. just to see God's power and you press through the hurt and the pain, not mm -hmm. only of your, you know, your family, mm -mm. but your church family. Yeah. You know, but you know what? All that you have, all that you have. You don't have yes. nothing else. Yes. Okay? But you know what? God is that remnant. And it's so beautiful to hear, you know, how God mm -hmm. has brought you out and how he's still healing because he still heals. Yeah. Don't he bring up stuff that, mm -hmm. you know, we may not have known that was still there and something will come mm -hmm. up and it'll bring us to a certain point in our life. But God says, I'm, I'm healing you now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm proud of you Thank that you keep holding on to God. Thank goodness. God is amazing. Thank Thank you. Thank you, Carmelita. Uh, Lydia, I see you're up next. Unmute yourself. I'm going to unmute you. Hear you, Lydia. Un oh, no. Can you hear me? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm on the other side where my dad was so abusive. Mm -hmm. And then um, my husband, he drinks a lot. And when after my son died, I had a judgmental spirit where I'm like, you know, we dealt with the worst thing when your child dies. Why can't you just stop drinking? Why can't you just give it to God? Why can't, mm -hmm. you know, and to the point where I'm just angry and frustrated and then the enemy's laughing at my face and I hear it and and I'm like, what do I need to do? And, you know, I've been crying out to God and, you know, God tells me, see him how I see him, see him how I see him. And then I get real angry because I'm like, you know, we are two more kids. They get to see what you're doing. You're falling mm -hmm. down. You're doing all this and that. And, you know, but God is working on my heart. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, that for because how I feel is I was treated so bad as a child and abused that why would you do the same thing to your kids? Like out of love, you stop. But mm -hmm. my husband, like my husband loves my kids, but he mm -hmm. has an addiction and it's hard for me to understand where he's coming from. Because for me, my kids are my life. Like I'll mm -hmm. do, I'll give up whatever it takes for my kids. And so it was really, it's really hard for me to understand why do you keep drinking? You're hurting the kids. My kids are older now, but they deal with all this. And, you know, my heart was getting like a heart of stone. Like, I'm just mm -hmm. mad. And then, like you said, you know, and I, I'm ashamed to, but I have to confess that I get overwhelmed. And God always mm -hmm. takes me to people that are addicts or people that have been doing mm -hmm. drugs. Or, and, you know, stubborn people that don't want to let go or that cannot mm -hmm. let go. And. You know, when I'm hearing you talking, I'm like, God is doing something in my heart. Mm -hmm. Where I need to see him how he sees him That's and not good. be so, you know, like, judgmental mm -hmm. about it. Like, I have a lot of pain, but it's not their fault. And like you said, God is in control. And I see mm -hmm. how, you know, all this stuff could have happened to you, but God still had mercy on you. And I'm no saint. I mean, I still done my mm -hmm. dirt, but I didn't hurt my kids. I feel like that, you know, like. Mm -hmm. But I hear what you're saying, and I know that God is a merciful God. Mm -hmm. You know, I've shared with the ladies before about my son dating this girl, and I was, like, so mad. And going through this, you know, through these Bible studies, I've been, like, praying for her, and I've been asking mm -hmm. God soft in my heart. Because it mm -hmm. wasn't even just for her. It's something for me to learn. Mm -hmm. And it's to soften my heart and be, mm -hmm. you know, give mercy like it was given to me. Because I got a lot of dirt on me. So I know I've been forgiven for much. And I need to give that back. But I guess mm -hmm. 
after a while and then you get angry and then all this stuff happens and the enemy blinds you like your husband ain't never going to stop and right. you know you should just give up and then I go to church I come home my husband falling down and it's like it breaks my heart it hurts mm -hmm. and it's you know hearing your testimony I know there is hope and I know God is working on us and I think two weeks ago someone said that might not be your assignment you know so mm -hmm. you know this was really amazing amazing mm -hmm. thank you for sharing Amen. Thank you, Lydia. Mm. Mm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Anybody? Uh, like yes. Julie. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Hi, Cecily. Hi. <laughs> I am so proud of you. I just, you know, I kind of um, remember when you walked that journey and how I used to watch your daughter at the time. And it's just like, you know, so much is rising up in me because. I see you there, and then I see where God brought you from. Mm -hmm. And I'm just proud of you. Um, you know, it's like the Hebrew boys who went through the fire but came out not smelling of smoke. That mm -hmm. is you. Mm -hmm. You came out without a scar, without a scratch. And I know your heart, and I know your outer because we've been together for a long mm -hmm. time. So I'm proud of you. My mom says you look good also, and we all <laughs> proud of you. Very proud of you, okay? I love you, Sid. I love you, too. I love you, too. <laughs> Thank you so much for that, Jillian. You know, it's, it's such a blessing to hear your story and to see the grace and goodness of God through you and to be able to understand that that same goodness, grace, and mercy is available mm -hmm. for us. Amen. Amen. That it's available and it doesn't matter what we're doing. It doesn't matter where we've been. It doesn't matter how many times God has called. And like I said, I couldn't answer. I didn't answer. I never mm -hmm. answer. But he doesn't stop calling. And he knows exactly where you are. Mm -hmm. So he comes and he taps right on your window mm -hmm. until the appointed time when, as you said, when the God in you can answer to himself. Mm -hmm. That's so, it's so powerful mm -hmm. to hear that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sis. We, mm -hmm. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. y'all. What a blessing. Mm -hmm. what is there a, anyone? And them spirits, and them spirits is real. That's, mm -hmm. yes, they are. That's, yeah. That's, yes. yes, those spirits are real. Yeah. Any other questions? Or thoughts That's... or anything you just feel need to be said because yeah. you know in this community you are yeah. safe and seen. Yes. Marche, I see you. Yes. Um, you... yes. Okay. I've been going Cecily since she was a 12, 13 years old. And I just want to tell you, Cecily, I'm so proud of you. Your testimony has really blessed me. It's even bumped up my faith. I see God doing longevity, how God can keep you. God can keep you. And I just want to say, I love, love you, Cecily. I'm so proud. Hi. Hi, Marcia. I love you. <laughs> I remember Marcia is so meek. I, I, I just, I, Mar, but Marcia did not play. And Marcia, you were such an inspiration to me. Thank and you. A Hi. young woman young mm -hmm. and we would come over to her apartment mm -hmm. and she yep. would stay to the bone and mm -hmm. we would be getting ready to go out and party mm -hmm. and she would never judge mm -hmm. she would never she mm -hmm. is the prime example mm -hmm. of no judgment mm -hmm. but she would just give the word in yes. such a just a beautiful way, and that yes. word of God would just stick with you. Thank such you. a beautiful, such a, a just a beautiful, non-judgmental, true women of God. Mm -hmm. well, thank just, you. The, I'm thank telling you, Doctor, love Kate you so much. Your family is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. They are the prime example of God's love. Mm -hmm. And I am so grateful for each one of you. 
And I just thank y'all for just adopting me as your sister. I just love each and every one of you. Amen. Amen. Is there anything else? Yeah. See, Carmelita, your hand raised. Carmelita? Yes, ma'am. I, I, I wanted to ask a question, and it doesn't necessarily have to be answered today. It could, you know, I just want to know um, from any ladies, their wisdom. Um, why do you believe that God does these kind of things? Like, why does he work? And, and again, we can answer this later because I know it's almost mm -hmm. time. But why does he do this? And then also like prostitutes and things and da -da 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 -da, drugs and, you know, I'm just curious. And then also because you mentioned sex. Right. I was wondering about and this is random, but. I didn't, I wanted to know how God felt because me and my friend, we were talking about sex last night and he said mm -hmm. that sodomy, you can, you're not supposed to have sex in the butt or mm -hmm. oral sex. So then mm -hmm. that brought me to wonder how does God feel about all this stuff that we're doing, you know, like in terms of sex, homosexuality. And I know this is in the Bible, but I wanted to hear it from wise women and men. So just want to put that out there since we're talking about the sex industry, sex trade, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Thank you, Carmelita. Um, Carmelita, quickly, what was your first question? I didn't. Why does God allow allow it? Like, what do you mean? I what do, do you it. mean? Okay, okay. okay. Like in like in terms like of Cicely's situation, right? Mm -hmm. She was speaking about how all you know all along she did have God in her. You mm -hmm. know, we know that we're God's children, mm -hmm. but she couldn't hear. She couldn't see. She couldn't answer Him and. Mm -hmm. All along, though, she's knowing she's out in the street doing things that are not of God. So but God already knew that these things would happen. But why does he let these things happen? Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see what I'm trying to ask? Okay. Like, why did it take all that to, you know? Well, I mean, I think Cecily answered it best. Okay. Um, and um, Cecily answered it best when she said, um, I did. I made choices. So God's not going to go against our will. He's going to let us do what we want to do. And so it's like we can answer quickly. We can not answer. We can ignore him. Um, because I think all of us have been in situations and circumstances that we knew it was God. And we said, I'm not answering that. <laughs> like, you know, like, because I'm into what I want to do right now. And, you know, and, and and we just kept doing which prolonged our, you know, our season, our space, our, our what we had to go through. If, and then there's sometimes that he's so great is like she she said, um, I know by his power, he pulled me and drew me to him. I mean, that's the end of this whole chapter. He says, now I will gather them. Hmm. Because they, uh. they couldn't gather themselves in verse 10. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to gather them. You know, I'm going to still come after you. And that's the, I mean, you, your testimony is the book of Hosea. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm, I'm coming for you. So mm -hmm. let's mm -hmm. flip it and say, not why would he allow it, but say, look how many times he comes for us when we're allowing to do certain stuff. Yeah. Look, at, look at how many times he 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 reaches out, he warns. And then I heard something so amazing today because um, not everyone lets God bring them back in mm -hmm. and not everyone answers. Yes. Yeah. I mean, let's just be real. Mm -hmm. I mean, because then hell Absolutely. wouldn't have nobody in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so not everyone does. Right and um, someone put it this way. God died on the cross for us for a maybe maybe you would receive him maybe you wouldn't and maybe you wouldn't mm. it's like he loves us so much he mm. he he's so concerned about us that he did it on a maybe knowing that some would and some wouldn't mm. it, you know i think too pastor casey we go through things um, and those of us who are called, you know, he will allow us to go through some things like Cecily said, and he'll spare our lives in that, in the, in that desert, in those, in the valley of the shadow of death, he will spare our lives. Um, but he's predestined for us to come out on the other side. 
Because God, God, God plays chess. We play checkers, right? He always sometimes he's got to sacrifice your knight. Sometimes he got to sacrifice your rook. Sometimes he got to sacrifice even your queen. But he's already he has already gone to the other side of the board and secured your win. So he's going to he's going to protect you in those times because he he sees you. He knows you're going to make it to the other side and then you're going to tell people other people how to get out. You're going to be a living testimony of how good God is. You're going to be a living testimony of his grace, of his favor, of his love. He knows that Cecily was going to be brave enough to come and speak and share her testimony. So he's like, not this one. You can do this to her. You can take that away from her, but you cannot take her life because I've already predestined that she is going to be a standard, a light bearer, a lighthouse for those behind her that need to know how to get out. For those that will listen and hear and know that I love them despite what you've been through, that I see you and I love you no matter what, what the world has put on you, the choices that you've made, the decisions that you made, I still love you and I still want to have a relationship with you. So it's a two-part answer. We make choices, right? We have the choice to do and, and let us be as big and bad as we want to be. But he already know the end. He already know the end. So he's like, I'm going to let you go on. And you got all them demons on your back. But mm -hmm. I already know what the end looks like. So I'm going to spare your life. They cannot kill you. Man. Yep. I'm covering uh -huh. it. I'm covering okay. it. Okay. Yep. Even, even with all that you are using your free will to sabotage okay. yourself, I'm covering you. Amen. 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 Oh, well, it wow. is, we're at time. My goodness, the time went. Yes, yeah. Thank you. Thank this you. Thank good. you, Cecily. Thank you. Thank so y'all for the invitation. Much. Yes, I love coming. all y'all. We <laughs> love you. We love you. Cecily, we love you. And will you pray us out, Cecily? Please yeah. do. Mm. Well, Lord, I just want to tell you thank you. I, I just cannot express gratitude enough for your goodness and your mercy that endures through all generations, Father God. And Lord, I thank you for these powerful women that have surrendered their lives to doing your will. And I just want to pray for peace, love, joy for each woman, each family that is represented at this Bible study today. And Lord, I pray that they will just surrender to your process because your process is perfect. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I thank you that each woman has been bold enough to take a stand to get to the cross with the fellowship that has been allowed to these three women of God. Mm -hmm. Not our will, but Lord, your will be done. Yes, and I thank you for your blood. I thank you for the blood of the lamb that was shed for our sins. Mm -hmm. And that you no longer are on the cross, but that you died and rose in order that we may live and have life more abundant. Mm -hmm. I just want to give you praise. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, so Thank you everyone. Amen. Amen. We love you. God love. bless you. And we will see you again next week in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, y'all. Amen. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs>